In this lecture, we'll talk about functions. To begin with, let's talk about the definition of a function. Let x and y be two non-empty sets. A function from x into y is a relation that associates with each element of x exactly one element of y. The set x is called the domain of the function, and the set of function values y is called the range. Let's look at an example. We're given a list of people and their potential favorite sports teams. For the people we have Roscoe, Sally, Ben, Jack, and Peter, and the potential teams are the Pirates, the Cardinals, the Spiders, and the Raiders. Roscoe's favorite team is the Pirates. Sally likes the Cardinals. Ben also likes the Cardinals. Jack likes the Raiders. And Peter's favorite team is the Spiders. So, given the two sets above, people and favorite teams, and the relation between them, we should be able to answer, is this representative of a function? And the answer is yes. By definition, each element in x, so people, is associated with exactly one element from y. Since this is a function, we should be able to determine the domain, and the domain will be our list of people, so Roscoe, Sally, Ben, Jack, and Peter. And we should also be able to determine the range. The range is our list of teams, the Pirates, the Cardinals, the Spiders, and the Raiders. Let's look at another example. This time our two sets are lists of names and potential favorite foods. So for the names, we have Betty, John, Sam, and Sparky. For the potential favorite foods, we have pizza, mac and cheese, Brussels sprouts, chicken, and Alpo. Betty really likes pizza, but she also really likes Brussels sprouts. John's favorite food is chicken, Sam's favorite food is macaroni and cheese, and Sparky, who is a dog, his favorite food is Alpo, which is dog food. So given these relations between the people and their favorite foods, would this be a function? And the answer is no, because Betty has two favorite foods. That means there are two elements of y associated with the one element of x. Let's look at a couple more examples. So this time our information are ordered pairs. We have the point negative 2, 5, the point negative 1, 3, the point 3, 7, and the point 4, 12. For this set, the domain or x values will just be the x coordinates and the range or y values or set y will be the y coordinates. So with that in mind, do these points represent a function? And the answer is yes. Since each element in x is associated with only one element from y, this set of points does represent a function. Since it is a function, we should be able to identify the domain. And the domain will just be the set of x coordinates, negative 2, negative 3, 3, and 4. And we should also be able to identify the range, which will be the set of y coordinates, 5, 3, 7, and 12. Here's another example. This time our points are negative 4, 4, negative 3, 3, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, and negative 4, 0. So do these points represent a function? And the answer is no, because the x coordinate of negative 4 has two associated y coordinates. So far, all of our examples have had lists of items or numbers, but we won't always be given a list. Sometimes we just need to look at an equation. So let's talk about determining whether an equation is a function using an algebraic method. So to determine whether an equation is a function, the first thing you want to do is solve your equation for y, and then determine how many values of y are possible. If it's only one value that's possible, then it is going to be a function. But if you can have multiple values, it would not be a function. For example, y equals the absolute value of x. We've already solved for y, so we need to determine how many values of y would each x give us. And since each value of x would produce only one value for y, this is going to be a function. Here's another example. Consider the equation x plus y squared equals 1. So the first thing we want to do is solve for y. We begin by subtracting x from both sides of the equation. 
So we have y squared equals one minus x. To get rid of the square, we take the square root of both sides, and we would get y equals plus or minus the square root of one minus x. Now that we've solved for y, we consider how many values of y would be given for any value of x. So for any x that we plug into this equation, we would get two values of y, both a positive and a negative value. So since each x produces two y's, this is not a function. Let's talk about finding the value of a function. Function notation y equals f parenthesis x close parenthesis is read y equals f of x. And when we're talking about functions, y and f of x are pretty much interchangeable. So y equals 2x plus 5 is the same thing as f of x equals 2x plus 5. So to find a function value, we'll plug a value, which is inside the parentheses, into our function for x and simplify. So for example, if we're given the function f of x equals negative 2x squared plus x minus 1, we want to find the function values f of 0, f of 1, and f of 2x. We'll start with f of 0. To find the function value for f of 0, we'll take the number that's inside the parentheses, that's 0, and plug it into the equation for x. So f of 0 would equal negative 2 times 0 squared plus 0 minus 1. If we simplify, that'll give us 0 plus 0 minus 1, and so f of 0 would equal negative 1. For f of 1, we would plug 1 in for x, so that would give us negative 2 times 1 squared plus 1 minus 1. If we simplify the exponents in multiplication, that'll give us negative 2 plus 1 minus 1, and so f of 1 equals negative 2. Finally, to evaluate the function value f of 2x, we would plug 2x in everywhere that we see x. So f of 2x would equal negative 2 times 2x squared plus 2x minus 1. When we square the first term, that gives us negative 2 times 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. And if we simplify, that gives us negative 8x squared plus 2x minus 1. Now let's talk about the domain of a function. The domain of a function is the largest set of numbers for which f of x is real. In other words, it's what values of x that will produce real values for y. To find the domain of a function, we want to keep two things in mind. You cannot have a zero in the denominator of a fraction, and you cannot have a negative number under an even radical, so the square root, the fourth root, the sixth root, etc. So as long as we avoid these two things, our domain will be all real numbers. So to find the domain, we just need to make sure that these two rules are not broken. So let's do an example. Find the domain of the function h of x equals 2x divided by x squared minus 4. So if I think about the two rules, the one that would come into play here is the fact that I cannot have 0 in the denominator of a fraction. So to find the domain of this, we note that the denominator x squared minus 4 cannot equal 0. And now we can solve this equation. We can add 4 to both sides, so x squared cannot equal 4. Then take the square root of both sides, so x cannot equal plus or minus 2. So our domain in set builder notation is the set x such that x does not equal 2 and x does not equal negative 2. Let's look at a couple more examples. First, let's find the domain for the function capital G of x equals the square root of 1 minus x. So for this function, we're worried about the second thing that cannot happen. We cannot have a negative number underneath an even radical. So to find the domain, let's set what's underneath the radical and make sure that it's greater than or equal to 0. So 1 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0. We can add x to both sides of this inequality, and that gives us 1 is greater than or equal to x, and so our domain will be the interval from negative infinity to 1, where 1 is included since it was greater than or equal to. Take a minute and try this one yourself. Find the domain for the function f of x equals x divided by the square root of x minus 4. So because we're dealing with the square root, we know that what's under the square root must be positive, so x minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. But we're also dealing with a fraction, so the denominator, the square root of x minus 4, cannot equal 0. 
if we put those two together, that means that x minus 4 has to be greater than 0, cannot be equal to 0. So we can add 4 to both sides of the equation, and that gives us that x must be greater than 4. So our domain would be the set x such that x is greater than 4, or in interval notation, 4 comma infinity. Now let's talk about combinations of two functions. We can take the sum of two functions, f plus g of x, by adding the two functions together. So f plus g of x equals f of x plus g of x. And the domain of the sum will be the domain of f intersected with the domain of g. We can take the difference of two functions, f minus g of x, by subtracting the two functions, f of x minus g of x. And the domain of the difference will also be the domain of f intersected with the domain of g. We can take the product of two functions, f times g of x, by taking the product of the individual functions, f of x times g of x, and the domain of the product is also the domain of f intersected with the domain of g. Finally, we can take the quotient of two functions, f divided by g of x, by taking the quotient of the individual functions, f of x divided by g of x, and the domain of the quotient will be the domain of f intersected with the domain of g with the restriction that g of x cannot equal zero. So let's look at an example. Given f of x equals 2x plus 1 and g of x equals 3x minus 2, find the sum, difference, product, and quotient of the functions and state the domain of each. Starting with the sum, f plus g of x will equal f of x plus g of x. So we plug in our function values, 2x plus 1 plus 3x minus 2, and combine like terms to get 5x minus 1. And the domain of this combination will be the set of all real numbers. Next we can do the difference, f minus g of x equals f of x minus g of x. Again we plug in our functions, so 2x plus 1 minus 3x minus 2. We can distribute the negative throughout the parentheses, giving us 2x plus 1 minus 3x plus 2. And if we combine like terms, that'll give us negative x plus 3. And the domain of this combination is also the set of all real numbers. When we look at the product, f times g of x equals f of x times g of x, we plug in our two functions, so 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 2. We can FOIL that out to get 6x squared minus 4x plus 3x minus 2. And if we combine like terms, that gives us 6x squared minus x minus 2. And the domain will be all real numbers. Finally, if we look at the quotient, f divided by g of x, that'll equal f of x divided by g of x. We plug in our functions to give us 2x plus 1 divided by 3x minus 2. And there's no way to simplify this, so that will be our solution, 2x plus 1 divided by 3x minus 2. And our domain will be all real numbers except for what makes the denominator 0, so that'll be the set x such that x does not equal 2 thirds.